رجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وصلاۃ وسلام علیہ اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین ابوالقاسم مصطفیٰ محمد و اہل بیت طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین اما بعد فقط قول اللہ سبحان و تعالی فی قرآن الکریم و قول حق و ہوا ازدق الصادقین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الذین آمن و عامل الصالحات اولائی کہم خیر البریہ صلی اللہ بھیجے محمد والے محمد So those who have faith and do righteous deeds, they are the best of creatures. So Alhamdulillah, God has given us another chance to be here and to discuss few things about faith. Our discussion was about the relationship between knowledge and faith. Last time we were discussing on those issues. But we started off with the materialistic worldview and Islamic worldview. From there we started our discussion and then we reached this point. So one of the important thing when we talk about the worldview is that how do you see world? How do we define world? The reality of the world, which is very important. So a person who is not religious, who does not believe in God, who does not believe in hereafter, how he is going to define this world and how he is going to live in this world. Is it going to be the same as a person who has faith in God, who believes that there is one God, who believes that there is hereafter, there is day of judgment. Are they going to be the same in their actions, in their deeds, in their relationships? Definitely not. Hal Even God says, they are not going to be equal, those who have knowledge and those who don't have knowledge. They are not equal. But as a human being, we are equal. If you come out of this mosque and you get along with people in the society, you will just say they are like us, they are also human being. But they may have a different faith, they may have a different belief system, they may have different experience. So sometimes we get lost. Our children get lost when they make friends who are non-believers or their belief is weak. They talk to them, they share their ideas, thoughts, and they get confused. And that is our job, is to correct them, is to tell them what is right and what is wrong, where is the problem. So the question for today I want to discuss is about satisfaction which is connected to our discussion with faith. So the question here is, how many people in this world are satisfied with their life? We all know how much we are satisfied. Though we have faith or we don't have faith, we are an atheist, God forbid. So those who are atheists, those who are liberals, seculars, and those who call themselves religious, how much are we satisfied in our life? A very fundamental question. As a Muslim, as a Mormon, Shia, I should be the most satisfied person in my life. Because my belief system is such a strong, my faith is so strong that I should always be satisfied in my life. But unfortunately, it's not reaching that level there is some problem coming in my life. So let's see and understand some basic points. Why we don't get satisfaction in life? There are many reasons. So today I will try to touch one point, one aspect of it. I will try. So if we see that success, maybe we define that if you are rich, you are wealthy, you will be satisfied. But when we search, we find many who are rich and wealthy enough, but they are not satisfied. And we see many, those who are deprived of this wealth and money, they are satisfied in their life. So the relation between wealth 
and satisfaction is not the relationship of cause and effect right so that relationship is not there you might find some rich and satisfied and some poor also satisfied so if we have to choose between two what is better to be rich wealthy and not satisfied or to be okay but satisfied what will you choose it depends on your understanding and your reality about what is right so marital uh, the material life the materialistic world talk about all those material things and they tell you we will give you satisfaction if you will get materialistic gains and we know that satisfaction is something which is inner part of yourself which has nothing to do with physical substance the satisfaction is in spirit not in body your spirit gets satisfied your ruh gets satisfied the satisfaction is in the feeling when you say i feel satisfied that is the fundamental question so can anything give you satisfaction which is material no material thing cannot give you satisfaction for example when you serve voluntarily in the month of ramadan to the people you get satisfaction this service to humanity is give you satisfaction so this service is material no the feeling is immaterial when you help poor when you help needy when you pray then you get satisfaction that satisfaction is immaterial so it is very important for us to understand the source of satisfaction is not in material it is immaterial so if i want to be satisfied in my life i have to know my feeling how i am feeling this is the first step so how are you feeling now after the month of ramadan you must be feeling good you have energized yourself your spiritual level have developed so you must be satisfied because this is the way you are feeling the whole month you did that practice to uplift yourself the next step what is the source of this feeling very important what is the source of this feeling which is giving me either good feeling or bad feeling why i feel sometimes good why i feel sometimes bad why i feel sometimes i'm not satisfied sometimes i really feel satisfied why what is the source so the source according to islam according to psychology is the way you think it goes back to your thinking the way you think the way you feel if you think good you feel good if you think bad you feel bad so thinking is connected to your feeling and your feeling is connected to your action so the way you will think the same way you will feel and the same way you will behave your behavior will be reflection of your feeling which is coming from the thought process that is why a moment is always optimistic the beauty of moment is he is optimistic he thinks everything in a positive angle that's why he is never hopeless he never loses hope he is never depressed because he has god whom he believes he is strong in his action because he knows god is there and as a moment he knows what i am doing is to please god so there is no point he will be depressed sad or in anxiety or depression why he cannot be yes temporarily then he will go back to his state that where he will be at ease he will become i will come to that in in our later sessions in deep in, in next sessions in it in detail so it is important for us that if anything any incident happen in your life something you had a loss for example your god forbid your shop got burned and you didn't had insurance how will you feel you will feel i have lost everything my shop my business my money everything how will you feel bad yes natural but if you are a moment how fast will you recover 
because you know it has been given by God and taken away let's say for, by God if he can bring me here he can take me to another level that's not a problem if I am a rich person I didn't become rich because of myself it was his blessing he made me rich he can make me poor and then again he can make me rich so my relation to that incident making me feel bad or good not that incident itself when you think about going to Karbala how do you feel you are not there but going and feeling is there you attach with that feeling so that is very important that is very important so that incident is not important the relation with that incident is important so a moment always think positive if anything happens bad to me I ask myself a good question not a wrong question very important for intellectuals those who think if you will ask yourself a wrong question you will get a wrong answer if you will say why my half how my, why my shop got burned he said you are a careless person that's why it got burned but if I will ask myself why what have I learned from this then the answer will come right do this to take care of your things if you will ask yourself right question you will get right answer if you will ask wrong question you will get wrong answer so many people say why my life is like this the answer comes you are unlucky you are bad you are poor but if I ask okay what I have learned from this they will tell you okay do this do that it is better okay so for example the re recession in Dar es Salaam if I say what I will do with my business now no money oh you cannot do anything so stay depressed no you will say okay this is the situation now how what is the possibility of coming out of it how to recover you will get possibilities you will know how to find out when you are ill you go to a doctor do you does doctor make you depressed no he gives you hope he gives you treatment and you are cured he knows he has the knowledge so the point here is when you don't know the reality of something you get into problem but when you know the reality of something you are clear so in our life if your expectation is not right from the life you will stay depressed sad in anxiety in pressure if your expectations are not right from this world you will never be happy in your life but if your expectations are real from this life you will be at ease you will have no issues because you know how this life is how people are you will never see people complaining about people because we know how human beings are when they are rich how they treat when they are poor how they are when they get power what they do when they are powerless what they do everything has been taught by Islam to us our prophets and our Imams have told us everything about human being the history is there then again why do we get depressed when we talk to people when we ask something and we don't get the reality is to us clear so it is very important for us to understand that we need to know the reality of the thing of people of this world and have the same expectation from them according to the reality then there is no loss there is no upset there is no depression but if our expectations are wrong which is unreal then we are sad then we are depressed then we are upset so let me give an example in today's world as we see the divorce rate is getting high so when I do counseling and I see cases the husband is having high expectations from a newly valid uh, wife who has just come into his life he has high expectations he says she should do this she should do that because my mother used to do this and all these things he wants her wife to be perfect on the very first day she should be perfect which is not going to happen in today's world girls most of the girls they are career oriented they don't want to cook at home they don't know how to cook they will learn if they want to if they don't want to and you are expecting no because my mother she you she was a good cook my wife should be good cook so my expectations is not according to her capacity her ability her potential my imagination is wrong 
my understanding is wrong and this is causing problem and conflicts and fight at home. I am idealizing something which is not realistic in the ground, on the ground it is not there. My expectation from my children is A plus so that I can tell people that my children are top toppers. But my children capacity is not of A plus, they are B or C. Because if I see myself, I was a C grader, my wife is a D grader and I'm expecting my child to be A plus? No, they don't have that capacity. So why I'm keeping that expectations from my children? So this expectation is ruining our life. We cannot come in terms with each other because I am thinking idealistically, which is totally different from the reality. So I blame my tutor, I blame the school, I blame the teacher, and sometimes I blame my child also. But I don't blame myself that I'm having a wrong thinking. My thinking is not real. So same thing is with the community. Me, as a scholar, if I am having high expectations from you, and in return, I'm not getting what I should expect. If I am praying here, leading prayers, and I expect this is the community of 8,000, the mosque should be jam-packed. And I see it, oh, only four rows, five rows. Where are the other people? Are they not Mumini? Are they not Muslim? Why are they not coming to pray? The 8,000 of people, 4,000, let's say, cut it down, 2,000. Hmm? Only a few hundred people, so my expectation should be wrong. I say, no, this is wrong. This community is bad. <laughs> no, you don't have understanding. You need to understand. You need to know the reality and then keep expectations according to that. So this is very important for us to have the real understanding and real expectations. Then you can enjoy your life. You have your employees working under you. You have your kakas and dadas at home. Do you have high expectations from them? No. You give them work according to their strength, according to their ability. And when they do it, you are happy. They are also happy. So a good employer, a good manager, a good director knows the capacity of their people and give them responsibility according to it. And when they do it, they reward them. What we do? We give them more than their capacity and we punish them also. And we are never happy and they are not happy with us also. So this is wrong. So let's conclude here that one of the problem is why we are not satisfied in our life is because our expectations are not according to the reality. Our expectations are beyond reality. That's why sometimes we expect more from ourselves. Sometimes we are superiority complex, in superiority complex or inferiority complex. That what we wanted, we didn't achieve, I'm a failure. My family is a failure, my whole generation is a failure, and we are failed because our expectation is not according to the reality. So we pray to God that God give us the knowledge so that we understand the reality of the life and make expectations accordingly so that we stay happy and satisfied in our life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.